Minnesota lawmakers spent decades talking about legalizing cannabis. It's finally going to happen on Tuesday. But after all that time talking about this issue, the details of this law are confusing to some people. Here to help us sort it out is Senator Lindsey Porto, a Democrat of Burnsville, and she wrote the bill, <laughs> along, with, along with some other people but yes. as well. You're one of the authors. One of the controversies we heard it at the top of the show, uh, the allegation that somehow you decriminalize marijuana for children. And you, you yourself are a mother of two young boys, 9 and 11 years old. Yeah, uh, I am. That's uh, just a crazy accusation. Uh, cannabis is not legal for children at this point. And as the law goes into effect on August 1st, it remains illegal. We legalized cannabis for adults 21 and older. Um, and, and Republicans have known that the entire you know, okay. the entire time. I want to get into some of the specifics in the law in just a bit, but another mm -hmm. part that doesn't get as much play is the fact that there's going to be the expungement of convictions for marijuana use for at least 60,000 people, and that's just going over the records you have that are computerized. Tell us about that. Exactly. This is really the heart of the bill, and it's why I took on this legislation in the first place, because prohibition has done so much harm to so many communities. It restricts housing. It restricts people from being able to get jobs. It really has had lasting effects that have disproportionately fallen on communities of color. So the expungement piece is huge and it is something we are very proud of. We're also the first state to make it automatic. Every other state that's okay. done expungement has required you to apply. Okay. We're making it automatic for people. So, you're, so people actually don't have to do anything. It should happen automatically. It's going to take a little while. If your records are back in the 90s, pre-computer age, that could take longer. It could take longer. It's going to take some literal manpower hours to go through each one. Um, each one and make sure it's done. But you'll be able to follow along on the state's website. All right. I want to ask you about the um, accusation of a, of a black uh, market being created in the next 18 months. Bottom line, what we have here is that it's going to be legal to use and possess marijuana here in a couple of days, but it won't be legal to sell it for another basically about 18 months so you can set up the administration and the licensing and the procedures to, to regulate this market. Is that going to be a problem because it doesn't seem totally logical at all? Yeah. The illicit market is already here in Minnesota. It's not going to come in suddenly. Uh, it's already here. And what we know is prohibition and criminalizing of possession and use of marijuana has not worked. It hasn't had any of the desired outcomes to make our communities safer. Um, and so we wanted to end that immediately. It also doesn't make a lot of sense to begin expungements if you're also adding to people who will have cannabis possession charges at the same time. It's, it's really a big disconnect. In addition, we have tribal partners right here in Minnesota who will be up and running before uh, the state has the legal framework and the licensing goes out in that way. And we can say the Red Lake Reservation will have it up and going on August 1st yes. because it is their, their nation to do that. Um, in terms of um, the overall sales, the people who get these licenses to sell, and there'll be an application process. Yep. This is potentially very, very big money. I mean, you could probably eventually make a lot of money selling marijuana legally. How is the licensing going to work? How are you going to make sure that those licenses are fairly distributed? We, and that won't be for like another 18 months. But. Correct. Yes, we are. We put a really strong emphasis on social equity applicants. So people who are from communities who have been disproportionately harmed by cannabis sales, people who've had folks in their own family who have been incarcerated uh, due to cannabis, people from communities of color, emerging farmers, uh, things like that, who we really looked at the okay. equity of this bill to make sure that it wasn't just people who had a bunch of money that they could dump in right away, jump to the front of the line, but actually the communities that have been most most harmed are at the front of the line. And I think we've aired just in the past number of months, you know, our station, other stations, news outlets, you know, negative stories or mm -hmm. qu questions or con conflicts or controversies. What's the reaction been in Burnsville? Yeah, actually, my my constituents have been very, very positive about this. Um, you know, I think everyone has seen that 
prohibition has failed and looking at ways that our communities can start to reap some of the benefits of the tax revenue looking at the folks who will not have to struggle to get housing because they have a past conviction on their record those are huge pluses for our communities and really the the overwhelming uh, is the word I would use for the support uh, in my own community. All right. Well, Senator Lindsey Poor, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Esme. Well, if you want to read more about legal weed in Minnesota, we have packed an extensive information list with all kinds of documents on WCCO.com.